Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. In the last video, we explored some volcanoes and temples before going to Batu Karas. In this episode, we'll finish off our time in Batu Karas, then check out Bandung for a few days before going to a mountain village called Dieng. So we changed camp spots. We decided to stay down at the car park where the beach is um, last night. It was pretty good. It was um, nice and quiet, although like you could obviously hear the surf. Um, but yeah, it was just a little bit more convenient than camping up the top and we get to wake up to this view. Beautiful morning. <laughs> The weather's a bit crappy today and the surf's not really working so we're going to go for a walk around the Chijilang area and check out the rice fields with our new friends, Renee and Mark. Hi guys! <laughs> yeah. Really random, Renee and I actually grew up about 10 to 15 minutes away from each other in Newcastle, but we never met before until here. Fun fact. <laughs> So today's Sunday and on Wednesday Ramadan starts um, and then for so the week or so leading up to Ramadan all of the families like just come down to like the beaches and other local areas to celebrate I suppose beforehand but this is at the gate going into Badu Karas and it is absolutely chaotic. So many people. Look at them all. It's going to be busy down there today I think. Good day to go for a walk. Hello. <laughs> We just got back to um, Batu Karas and the beach is absolutely hectic. There's so many people down here. The cars completely parked in. It's crazy. And then over in the surf, there's like thousands of people in the water. Look at them all. <laughs> After our walk yesterday, when we came back to the crazy amount of crowds down at the beach, um, we decided it might be a good idea to pack the car up and go back to our camp spot up on the hill. Um, once we'd packed the car up, we were all set ready to go. Mark tried to turn the car on and it wouldn't start. So there's something going on with the starter battery. I don't really know what it is. I'm not much of a car person, so maybe I'll ask him. What's going on with the battery? It's flat. Like, I, don't know, I, don't, and I don't really know why. Um, the way the system is designed is that when the ignition's off, um, the main battery is isolated. So the fact that it's flat when we haven't been driving for the last few days is a bit strange. Um, I checked it yesterday for a parasitic draw, which is when there's power coming out when the ignition's off, but that was okay. Um, so it might be the alternators. Um, not providing enough charge. There was a bit of a squeal the other day, or a slight squeal, which I'd, probably sounds like a belt slipping, so it might be the alternator belt. Um, so what I'll do now is, we've got the solar panel down off the roof and it's sitting over there. Um, that's charging the main battery at the moment. That's the way that, the way the um, charger works is that if it senses that the main battery is hasn't got enough charge, it'll charge that first before the auxiliary battery. Um, so we've so we, got this extension lead that comes yeah, out. Yeah, so this, we, put, we have this in the car too, which when these, when we want to park in the shade, we can get the panel off and put it in the sun, which is pretty handy. And yeah, so we'll charge, charge the main, and then once we kick it over again, I'll do some tests on the alternator to make sure that's um, still running as it should. As a tip, if you hear what sounds like a belt slipping, though not sure which one it is, an easy way to isolate the noise is to tip some water on each belt until the sound stops. Using a syringe is actually a lot easier, though I didn't have one on hand. With the belts tightened, we were back in action and made our way up to our little hilltop hideaway. 
Today is the first day of Ramadan, which as a Muslim, it is a whole month of fasting. During the day, all of the restaurants are closed, um, though some are open for Westerners like us and they keep. So we like, have to sit behind these, uh, the shade so that we're not eating in front of everyone else, just out of respect. We've just packed down the car and about to go back down to the beach and pick up the surfboard so we could pack everything back up on the roof. And then today we are hitting the road again and making our way to Bendung, which is about halfway, I suppose, between here and Jakarta. Um, it's only about 200 or so kilometers, but people have been telling us it takes a good, like, between six and 10 hours to get there. So yeah, I think it'd be a bit of a slow going drive today. Um, the family who we met a couple of episodes ago um, on the ferry between Flores and Sumbawa, they're actually from Bendung and they've invited us to go and see them so that'll be really nice to catch up with them um, and yeah as far as what to do in Bendung we've got a lot of stuff that we need to do maintenance wise on the car so um, I think the shopping is pretty accessible for like things to buy there um, so hopefully we can get all of our to-do list ticked off. which we thought might be good last night was not really that good. Um, it was a bit of a derelict park, so we decided just to get some dinner and then we were having a look on Google for places where we could possibly just go and ask if we could use their parking for the night. Um, and we came across a bed and breakfast called Attic. So we drove here and the guys here are super, super nice. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't any parking in their premises but there's an empty lot next door which they said that we can park at and they gave us the best hot shower which we've had in months so that was pretty awesome um but it's in a really central location so it's going to be like a good spot to base ourselves um just to go and pick up all the parts that we're going to get for the car and um bendong's apparently meant to be really good for shopping so maybe i can go and check that out as well um, the parking lot itself, it was, it's been pretty good. Um, it was pretty busy this morning about 3 a.m. because it's Ramadan. So everybody gets up at about 3 to prepare to eat for the, their first meal for the day before they have to start their fasting. So there was a, there's a kitchen next door. So there was some ladies banging about with the pots and pans. <laughs> um, but other than that, it's been pretty good. In Indonesia, we, um we turn a lot of heads mainly for two reasons. One, because of the size of our car. It's, um, it's bigger than nearly most all other cars on the road. And the second one is because land cruisers here, because of their taxes, are uh, pretty rare and troop carriers um, are even more rare. But um, we've uh, come here to uh, our new friend Randy's place here in Bandung and he's a bit of an exception to the rule because he's got not only one but two troopies 
um, an FJ, a 1964 FJ, which is the same as my first full drive, and a Bandera. So we're doing uh, service on the car here, which is awesome because um, I've been looking forward to doing this for a while. This afternoon we're meeting up with Roly and Yani, which was one of the couples who we met on the ferry from Flores to Sumbawa um, back in January. Um, so they're going to come and pick us up this afternoon and take us on a little bit of a sightseeing day. Um, I think we're going to a crater, I mean a volcano, which is about 50 kilometres north of the city where you can drive right up to the crater, crate, crater. <laughs> so that should be pretty cool. As you can see, it's pretty cloudy up here today. Can't see much at all, just white. So these are our rides for the day, taking us around the Bandung countryside. And just behind here, we have the Tenkuban Purahu Crater, which we just found out last erupted in 2013. We're just on our way out of Bandung now and going to Semarang, and it's about 450 kilometers to get there and people are telling us it takes about 12 hours. There is a toll road which goes there so we're going to take that which means that I get to relax for a change. I'm not like stressing out like a crazy person. <laughs> um, I don't think we're going to make it the whole way there though because it's now 20 to 4. Um, so there's apparently some rest stops on the toll road so I think we'll just pull over somewhere and get some rest and continue on in the morning. park for the night though I think we'll probably just find somewhere over there, over there where we can get somewhere dark and semi quiet there's also with the, with the rats there's like thousands of rats here and they're massive they're like <laughs> I just don't want them to get in the car and like I don't know make a house in there <laughs> oh it's so gross so this is where we camped last night and that is the toll road not too quiet um, we slept downstairs, downstairs, we slept down the bottom uh, just because it's much more insulated and quiet. Um, I got a bit of sleep, Jolly didn't really, she's, uh, she's pretty stroppy this morning. So yeah, sometimes overlanding is not all amazing camp spots and epic views. But today we're heading uh, further east, about 200 k's to Diang, which is supposed to be amazing up in the mountains. It should take us about five hours. That's it for this episode. Join us next time as we complete the journey to Dieng before shipping to our final Indonesian island of Borneo. Thanks for watching. See ya.